press up. Is this the worst performed exercise ever? Press up a movement that most people who train perform regularly. It seems by looking at it, incredibly simple exercise. However, is possibly exercise actually performed most poorly, especially by us CrossFitters, mainly because we train against the clock or for a score. There's a temptation to cut corners. Let me break down the movement and go through what I see mistakes. First of all, it's in the poor plank setup position. The first error I see that people do is to not establish a strong plank position. A lot of the time it's because the plank is another exercise where there's just so frequently a lack of understanding of technique. Go to the bigger classes, hit classes, boot camps, and ask athletes where they feel the plank. Oftentimes they'll talk about their lower back. This is because a lot of people have yet to understand how to engage the abdominals to create a neutral spine position. What we need to learn is controlling the pelvis to create that brace. If you watched my previous video, Bracing and Bird Dogs, you'll have seen me talk about this in more detail. Just a little refresher for you guys. You learn to find neutral spine on all fours. Engage your abs around your back, squeeze your belly tight, and then allow yourself to go into this arch back position, and then find that midpoint by using your abdominals. Your back should be nice and flat. From here, for a press up, you're going to step out one foot in other and maintain that position. If you're unable to do so when you go into this position here, it means you should be scaling this exercise to a simpler variation. Two options are, from here, squeeze and then lower down into this plank position where a kneeling plank, like so, there's a good option for your press ups. The second option, the one I prefer, is up on a box here. This is the scaling option I talk about. So everything that we're talking about today, when I talk about you should be scaling, this is what I talk about, okay? Either kneeling, if you have no opportunity to use a platform. Otherwise, bring yourself up into this position here. Nice, strong plank from here. Chest down to the box, and then driving straight back up. It's just easier to feel that straight line position from there. The other way, the other reason I like using a box is that you can progress on. So as you get stronger, you can lower the box down from a 30 inch box down to a 24 or a 20. You can also use a barbell on the rack and lower it down the rack from there. Once you've established that strong midline, that plank position, that's going to be really useful for building abdominal strength whilst doing press ups. You then need to maintain that throughout the press up. So once you've set this, it's going to be easy to maintain, obviously, but we need to make sure that we go down and come back up, keeping that line from our ankles to our shoulders, or if we're going on our knees, from our knees to our shoulders, the same. Very frequently, we'll see what we call the snake up, where we go down like so, and then we'd snake up like this, where our abdominals switch off, we lose that gap that we've created or that brace that we've created with our abdominals and that gap between our rib cage and our pelvis increases and our ribs flare up. First of all, you stop training your abdominals and your press ups when you do that. Secondly, because you haven't got that strong position, you're going to lose power. And thirdly, you're going to put your lower back at risk of getting injured because most people lack the mobility to be able to extend through their spine universally. We do allow kids to snake up as a scaling option, but for adults, most of the time, they're too tight in their back to let that happen, and therefore, everything's coming from that lower back that's causing impingement in their low back. The other way you can lose that midline stability is the opposite movement happening in which rather than we see in that snake up, the shoulders coming up first. Instead of that, we'll see the bum coming up first, like this. Not so much in a full press up of your toes, but often in the kneeling one, like this it looks like, rather than 
and occasionally we see it on this one as well. More often than kneeling, that's another reason why I prefer this one, because it's a much easier one to feel that straight line. But often, often uh, sometimes we will see this version where our bum leads the press up. It basically changes the line of action of the movement. So rather than pressing this way, we end up pressing like that because our as our butt comes back and up, we're actually using different muscles in the press up. We're not training the muscles, we're looking at training the press up, which is the triceps, uh, the chest, and the shoulders, but mainly just changing, training the, uh, the shoulders more than anything else with a little bit of triceps in there. It's just a, not a strong action, it's a kind of way of reducing the effectiveness of that press up. So make sure you can maintain that straight line throughout the press up. We're still on the subject of spinal alignment. Well, the final area of the spine we're looking at is the cervical spine, the neck. And another press up mistake we'll see is this turkey necking, where the head goes forward and then back up. So we kind of have that separation between the head and the spine. This is exaggerating a problem we're seeing in lifestyle where people have this forward head posture from all the time working at a desk on a screen or on your phone, the head moves forward like this, putting a lot of pressure on your neck. We want to train to strengthen these muscles in the back of the neck. So we want to maintain a neutral spine and a neutral head position. A good way to rehearse this, now it's very difficult to do on your own, but I'm going to give it a try, okay, is to do your press ups. I'm going to start with it here. See if I can balance it here. Oh, not bad so far. And we're trying to get my head in line with that PVC pipe. Now, whether I can do that in my press up as well. Oh, look at this balance. Now, you see on that one, there's a slight separation. I felt that one. Now, if you do have a head posture position, a forward head posture position, like so, just naturally, and you struggle even to get this to start with. Just go as close to it as you can. Do not get this happening here where your head comes up into extensions to make contact because that is equally bad for your neck. Practice some of those. You can use a PVC pipe or a broom handle. I'm pretty impressed with myself for doing that. Um, perfect neutral spine is what we are looking for in that press up. Just think of the bang we're getting for our back with that. We're working our midline really hard. Obviously, working our pressing muscles, that's the key, the key area, the press up. And also, we're working uh, our posture at the same time, getting all this benefit from a very simple exercise that requires zero equipment. If we don't perform it well, we're losing 50% of the benefits from that. So make sure you scale appropriately that allows you to maintain that perfectly aligned spine throughout. So next, let's talk about the shoulders and the hand position in your press up that has a big effect on how that press up benefits you. Common mistake I see in press up is people get into the position where their hands are actually slightly turned inward, like so. And that's going to create a press up position where you have what we call elbows flaring outwards. So from here, my elbows will go out in low of my head. My head's going to go forward often when I do this. It's incredibly uncomfortable for me, but for someone who does that regularly, that will probably be their comfortable press-up position. It's often seen people that are weaker in their triceps and their chest as a way of getting that press-up to work, but you're not going to improve the muscles that are weak by doing that. You're just going to train the anterior delta, the front deltoid, um, more than anything else, and also you're going to put your shoulder at risk because there's a lot of impingement in that shoulder joint when those shoulders are flared out to the side. We want to get the benefit of a strong press up so we have our hands slightly externally rotated. So that means it just turns slightly out to the side like so. Hand position can vary, but shoulder width or just outside is a good start point. A little tip is if you're doing high volume press ups, you'll see people will adjust their hand position throughout the sets. It just allows you to change very slightly the muscles being used and therefore allow you to get a few more reps out each step. What we're looking for from here 
is the OS to come down close to the side. About 45 degree angle relative to the body is a good place to start. Driving up and down like so. What I find is often when I'm training someone and I change their press up position, they're actually unable to get their chest to the floor with their elbows by your side. That's fine. It just shows there's a weakness there and therefore we need to use our scaling option which we have discussed at length earlier. But make sure that is your correct position. Therefore, you're gonna get a transfer across all the other exercises. So it's gonna to relate to your overhead press. You don't do an overhead press like this, okay? You don't do a bench press like this, hopefully, and handstand press ups. Definitely, you shouldn't do it like that, although you do see that as a flaw, people doing a handstand press up. So it's a great way to create that externally rotated position we're looking for when we're doing any kind of pressing and overhead work. Really make sure you're focusing on that. In terms of um, shoulder stability as well, make sure we are creating a position where our shoulders are active. That means we're basically pressing down into the floor, that start position, building stability in our shoulder blades, around our shoulder blade area. Now the way to test that, what the, the fault that I see is that often some people will get into their plank or their press up and their shoulder blades will be squeezed together like this. They drop down, shoulder blades together. Again, that puts the scapu in a quite a compromised position. Effectively, this position, let me just see this on the camera there, but this position where your shoulders are squeezed together. It's a bit of a compromised position, not very stable, not a lot of power from there, and not a transferable skill as well to the other areas. So make sure we have that stable shoulder. An easy way to do that is to learn through a scap press up. That's a press up in which we keep our arms straight. We're gonna press ourselves as far away from the floor as we can. That's gonna create a space between the shoulder blades. Then we're gonna draw them together. Then we're gonna press away to find that midpoint. That's our stable shoulder position we are looking for. And from there, that's where we're gonna hit our press ups from. Finally, probably the biggest bug there for most people in press up is the range of motion. This should be a non-negotiable. Whatever variation of scaling you're using, the, the rule of CrossFit is we're looking for range of motion over everything else. Make sure we are getting our chest to the floor. We define our chest as nipples because a lot of people take chest for belly. We want to see chest to the floor without the knees touching the floor unless you're doing a scale version. And then up to a full lockout. Chest to the floor, up to the full lockout. If you cannot do that, do not think that this is acceptable to do. Scale to a position where you can get your chest touching a target. So if you're on a box here, chest to the target, press away. Why is that important? Well, first of all, that's going to transfer across. If we're doing a shoulder press, we don't start from here. If we're doing a bench press, hopefully, although some people in the normal gym will, we're not starting four inches ahead of our chest. We're starting on the chest. If you want to improve all those areas, we're doing a ring dip. Again, if we're doing it properly, we're not starting from there, we're starting from there. And if we're doing a muscle up, well, you definitely need to be able to press from that position close to you. It's transferable strength. The other reason is we want to measure our improvement in our fitness. And we measure our fitness by work capacity. That's distance multiplied by load over time. If our weight stays the same and our range of motion stays the same, then it's very easy. If we're moving faster, we're doing more reps in a certain part time period, we're getting fitter. If our range of motion, though, is like this, okay, the one week, and then suddenly the coach calls us out, and we're doing this the next week, well, 50 reps like this is not the same force times distance as 50 reps like this. Significantly different. That's why when we performed Murph one year, we saw some of our athletes do times that were faster than the CrossFit Games athletes, it was purely because maybe some of their reps were not full range of motion. Just remember, one of CrossFit's key principles are mechanics, consistency, and intensity. 
we need strong mechanics. So you need to scale to whatever option allows you to perform the rep with good mechanics. We need to do that consistently before we increase the intensity. And the intensity in this case will be the difficulty. So scale to a range of motion, to a technique, to a height, whatever progression you use that allows you to maintain that strong midline, neutral spine throughout from the head all the way down to the ankles or the knees if you're doing a kneeling reversion. It allows your shoulders to work on the right angle and allows you to do full range of motion reps. It's a long video for such a simple exercise and that's how much there is to think about when you are doing a press up. That's what you should be trying to get in a press up. Simple exercises sometimes can be neglected and slacked off on. Make sure you're not doing that. Make sure you're giving it your full attention so you get maximum benefit from every single second of work you're putting in your gym time. That's what it's all about, efficiency. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.